Today is part three of Coco's journey um, on his last days. I hope you guys enjoyed his story and what he went through. It was hard, but like everybody says, he's in a better place. And I know he is without suffering. Thank you for watching. So just like, subscribe, and share it. Thank you. I've been grieving for 10 minutes. When they finally got him to start breathing, they had to paralyze him, sedate him, because they wanted to control his breathing and to try and control the episodes that he was having. They gave him the sedation medication. They put a tube down his throat to help him breathe. And he stayed. He was like that. He fought it. He fought the. He fought the the, par the paralegic medicine. He kept trying to move, like his hands, or trying to wake up. And he was breathing against the machine, the respirator, which was causing another problem because that means he was doing too much force, and his heart went from mild to severe meaning his heart got bigger it didn't that they were it wasn't as small as the other one it was a lot bigger it when you touch the walls of the heart you go into heart failure so we, i spoke to the nurses then they told me that they had got the approval this was the next day they approved his um his lung and heart transplant for New York. The problem was he couldn't be transported on a respirator. But waking him up was risky as well because it was it would be likely that he would catch another episode. This time they weren't sure how much damage happened because he was down for ten minutes. So they were scared of taking him up the respirator, which I was too because, you know, 10 minutes, just a long time, with no oxygen in the brain. So we had, we got him, we got, we made a plan where we would try and transfer him on the ECMO machine. An ECMO machine is a lung and heart machine. It works your lung and heart without you have, you doing it. The machine does it. The, this machine, he can be transferred with this machine. So I figured if he can be transferred with this machine, he can get his lung and heart surgery or transplant. Even though I know it's a process, at least we tried something. On the 20, 22nd that night, he was doing great. His stats were good. Every time I sent it to him, his oxygen would come up. I know he, he heard me because when he did it, his oxygen would go down and the nurses would get me and tell me to talk to him. So I would sing to him and he'll go from 70 to 90. He would go from 70 to 90 in seconds. So I knew he heard me. Um, we said we're going to give him 12 hours if he makes it through in 12 hours then we will give him the 12 hours to try and transfer him to new york um at 11 o'clock 12 o'clock i decided to take a nap because i was getting really tired i was pumping i decided to take a nap but before i took a nap i went to him and I told him everything was gonna be okay. That he was gonna be fine. And he was doing great. I prayed over him. I gave him a kiss. After kiss everywhere, on his face, on his hands, on his leg. I told 
told him that he was going to be okay and he was doing a good job. And then I told him that he needed to, he needed to go to sleep. He needed to take a nap. That mommy was going to take a nap. That he needed to take one too. And then I told him good night. I went. I laid down. And at two forty-seven in the morning, I don't know something woke me up. Nothing that I heard, nothing that touched me, that I felt, I don't know, just my instinct woke me up. And when I woke up, I seen the nurse over him, bagging him. So I was like, I asked her, what's going on? What's wrong with him? Is he okay? She's like, oh, you know, his heart rate is just dropping a little bit. So I got up and I told her, come on, come on, are you okay? Come on, come on. As soon as I started talking to him, his heart rate stopped. Like it was slowing down, and then he, they had, to, they had, everybody had to run in and start chest compressions. They started bagging him, and then they just kept on from there. They did CPR on him for 30 minutes. He came back five times. Every time he came back. Before the fourth the, or three times that he came back, he was, his heart rate was very faint. His pulse was faint. And it would beat for just a little bit and then drop. The fourth one, they were doing chest compressions. And when they did the chest compressions, he started, there was, there was blood. Blood started squirting out of his nose. When that happened, I I knew inside me that that was it. Even if he made it through this, that he was gonna have some damage. Inside me, I was yelling, "That's enough! That's enough!" But I couldn't say it. So they continued to do chest compressions and came back. But then the doctor came to me and told me, Mommy, listen, we're going to try one more time. If, if he comes back, then we'll put him on the respirator. But if he doesn't, if, if, if the heart rate faint falls from there, we're not going to try anymore. And I break down because I knew inside of me that he fought enough. He wasn't going to be able, his heart wasn't going to take it anymore. He, they did exactly what she said. They did chest compressions until he was breathing, until his heart started beating. They put him on the respirator. His heart rate lasted for about a minute. It didn't even slow down. It didn't even go down little by little. His heart just completely stopped. And that was it. I ran to him. I started yanking everything off of him and I just grabbed him and I held him from 3.11 in the morning until 11 in the morning. I bathed him, I washed his hair, and I told him I was gonna miss him. Everybody, we all gonna miss him. Uh, it turns out after we found out that Quran had a blood disorder he had not just pulmonary hypertension, he also had another lung disease. Bron bron I forgot the name of it, but it's in the 23rd branch inside of the windpipe. So he had a, a lung disease at the top of, top of the lungs and all the way at the bottom of the lungs. We never knew that. He never showed signs of asthma, shortness of breath just that one time, and that was two days before he passed. Then, um, it, you know, we just, everybody, everybody's in shock. The nurses, the doctors, everybody's crying because we all wanted him to make it. He tried, he tried to make it. He did everything he could. And he fought, 
to the end. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll be posting more videos, pictures of him in his remembrance. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you again. Once again, thank you everyone for watching Coco's journey on his last days. I'll be posting up some other videos, some other things with him. We'll be incorporating our everyday life with him. Even though he's not with us physically, he's still with us. So thank you everyone for liking, subscribing, sharing our story, his story. And looking forward to the future with, with him still. Thank you again and share his awareness.